Hi everyone, my name is Jen, I'm an author and a book reviewer and today I am here with a very, very large book haul. I'm also here with a new wig, which I'm rather pleased with. It's possibly giving off Annie vibes, but I'm hoping in the best way. Um, if you're new, I have external dysplasia and part of that involves alopecia. So I often wear wigs if I'm not wearing wigs, I'm normally just wearing a hat. Um, but yeah, I like her. So let us dive into the books. I will list all of the titles in the description box down below. Some of these are books I bought myself, some of them I have requested for review, but the first one is something different entirely because this is a book that I have written. This is my 11th book, yes, which came out this week. It's Marceline, Defender of the Sea. This is something a little bit different for me. I write for both grown-ups and for children, and I was approached by HarperCollins and asked if I would write something for their Collins Big Cat series. So these are books that primarily go into schools, but you can also find them in bookshops and libraries. So this is for year six, which is 10, 11 year olds, but it's also for anybody else who fancies a read. They were publishing a series of books on fairy tales and they asked if I wanted to write one of them. So this is definitely a book that is for little me. <laughs> it's definitely that. It's about a young girl called Marceline who learns all about the history of fairy tales at school. She has exodermal dysplasia, specifically EEC syndrome, which is what I have, and the whole class is told that for their holiday homework they each have to write a fairy tale retelling. But Marceline is going into hospital for an operation over the holiday period, and while she's recovering she's struggling to write. This is a story about disability, family, friendship, accessibility, fairy tales, and getting to tell our own stories. I'm just really, really pleased that I got to write this one and I am so thrilled that it's illustrated by Valentina Toro, who is also disabled. She has an upper limb difference too. And it's not very often that you get a book about disability by a disabled author and also illustrated by a disabled illustrator. And I'm so proud of that. This is a book, as I said, primarily for nine to 11 year olds. It's one of those books that at the back encourages children to talk about the story that they have read, but it can be just enjoyed as a story on its own. I don't wanna to give too much away, but this is one of the drawings that Valentina did of Marceline on a hospital bed as if she's in The Princess and the Pea. I loved writing this book and I'm thrilled that it's out in the world and if you would like to check it out I will leave links in the description box down below including links that have international shipping options and you can also request it at your library. So yes, spread the word about this one if you can. I would very much appreciate it. So that one, obviously, very close to my heart. Let's dive into the other books next to me. So we've got Gordy Gospodinov's book, Time Shelter. This is one of the books that's currently long listed for the International Booker. And I couldn't read it for the vlog that I filmed. I filmed one where I read, was it six books from the long list? I think it was six, yes. I will link that in the description box down below. But the hardback was all sold out and the paperback wasn't out yet. So I couldn't read this for that vlog, but I hope to read it in the future. Obviously, that's why I purchased it. The cover is stunning. This is about an architect, I think. Is it about an architect? I believe so, but it's about someone who's constructing a building that's specifically for Alzheimer's patients and each floor has been designed to look like a specific decade. I've heard the writing is beautiful. I will say that something that's very disappointing is the font is absolutely tiny to the extent that when I opened it, I was wondering if I'm gonna be able to read this. I will certainly give it a go, but yeah, the text is tiny. So if you also have uh, eyesight issues like me, then I think this is one to avoid. Maybe check it out as an ebook. If you have an e-reader, I don't have one of those at the moment. May have to get one in the future. Yes, anyway, the premise of this sounds wonderful. So that is going on the TBR. Next we have two proof copies. The first one is this called The Other Mothers by Catherine Faulkner. And the title of this is giving me obviously Coraline vibes, but also the premise, the beginning of the blurb reminds me a little bit of Night Bitch. It is about a woman who's called Tash, this is the press release. She's an ex-journalist who's looking for a story to launch her freelance career, but she's also looking for female friendship and women to support her during motherhood. So she goes to the local playground and she discovers what she calls the other mothers, this group of really charismatic, career-driven women who seem to have it all, and she wants to be just like them. But then the more she gets involved in their circle, 
she realizes that they can't really be trusted, they're hiding lots of secrets and there's something quite vicious going on. This may be something that will give her the story she's looking for, but it could potentially also put her in danger. I really like the premise of this. This one is out in June. And another one that's coming out in the summer is this one, which is called Cleaner by Brandy Wells. It's coming out in August, the proof cover at least, looks like this. This is about a cleaner, as you probably guessed by the title, who works in an office block doing the night shift. And she knows everything about the people who work in this particular office because she's taken it upon herself to go through their emails and their desk drawers. She knows who is having affairs. She knows who's trying to kick their smoking habit, etc. And then one day she stumbles across an email that has a huge secret and she doesn't really know what to do with it. And I don't wanna know any more than that. It sounds great, so I'll be reading this, and as I said, it's coming out in August. Next, we have two books that I have purchased because they've been recommended to me by you more than once. The first one is a work in translation called Notes of a Crocodile by Chu Mao Jin, and it's translated from the Chinese by Bonnie Hui. I don't wanna know much about this book. I know that it's set in Taiwan, I think in the late 80s, and it's about a group of queer misfits. It is narrated by an unnamed lesbian. It says about it's about discovering love, friendship, and artistic affinity while hardly studying at Taiwan's most prestigious university. That's all I want to know about it before diving in. The other one is Claire Keegan's Foster. I adore Claire's writing. I have read all of her books apart from this one, I think. I love her short stories in particular. I read her book, Small Things Like These, when it was shortlisted for the Booker Prize last year. In fact, I think I read it before it was shortlisted, but I revisited it when it was shortlisted. And that wasn't my favorite by her, but so many of you love this and have told me to read it, that I'm gonna listen to what you're saying and I'm gonna read it. The blurb is very short, let me read it to you. It is a hot summer in rural Ireland. A child is taken by her father to live with relatives on a farm, not knowing when or if she will be brought home again. In the Kinsella's household, she finds an affection and warmth she has not known, and slowly in their care, she begins to blossom. But there is something unspoken going on. So. Onto the shelf it goes. Another one of my most anticipated books for the summer is Penance by Eliza Clark. She is the author of Boy Parts, which was one of my favorite books in, I wanna say 2021? I think it was 2021. I loved it so much. It was so dark and so twisted, and I'm sure that this one is going to be much of the same. This is told from the point of view of Alex, who is a true crime sleuth. I think may have a podcast. He's delving into the history of this 10 year old murder. And I think that that creates quite a lot of unease, lots of secrets emerge. The end of the blurb says, it's an utterly chilling compulsive story of a murder among teenagers on the eve of the historic Brexit vote. And the back cover of the proof is very anxiety inducing by having lots of intrusive questions. I'm sure this is going to be great. I decided that I would give Janice Hallett another go. I read The Appeal in, what do people call it? In Betwixtmas? I don't know if I like that or I hate it. The period in between Christmas and New Year. She writes crime stories in fake found documents, multimedia, you know, text messages, emails. It makes everything really very readable and encourages you to try and solve the mystery as we go, noticing inconsistencies in people's stories and all of that. It's very fun. I liked it, but I also thought there were weird elements, maybe slightly problematic elements I wasn't sure of. And then I wasn't gonna pick up the Twyford Code because I'd heard very mixed things about it. I know that Emma over at Drinking By My Shelf loved it. I know that Lauren over at Lauren The Books really didn't love it. But this one is supposed to be more in the vein of the appeal and I'm hoping that I will like it. Of course, that's why it's here. It's the mysterious case of the Alperton Angels. Interestingly, this has a slightly similar premise to the Eliza Clark book that I just mentioned because this is about a true crime author called Amanda Bailey who has moved to this place to research the history of the Alperton Angels, which was a cult and the crimes that they got up to. But obviously this is going to make the locals a little bit cross because I'm sure that there are some secrets still hidden. The next book is a memoir and I can't remember when I first came across Kenny's writing but when I read the blurb of this book I thought this is such a me book. If I don't end up liking it I'm going to be so disappointed because the premise sounds so wonderful. This is called In the Province of the Gods by Kenny Fries. Listen to this blurb and tell me if this is not a gen book. 
Penny Fries embarks on a journey of profound self-discovery as a disabled foreigner in Japan, a society historically averse to difference. As he visits gardens, meets artists and scholars, he also discovers disabled gods, one-eyed samurai, blind chanting priests, and atomic bomb survivors. Upon being diagnosed as HIV positive, all his assumptions about Japan, the body, and mortality are shaken, and he must find a way to re-enter life on new terms. Please let us hope that I am going to love this book as much as I hope I am going to love it. Next up, we have a poetry collection. I bought Christopher Reed's new poetry collection. This is Toys, Tricks, Traps. Christopher's um, a very prolific writer. I remember reading his book, is it The Lunch? It's The Song of Lunch. And I remember that was made into a short film with Alan Rickman and Emma Thompson, at least. I think that's correct. And I hope that I haven't just imagined it. It'd be a very cool thing to imagine. I'm pretty sure that, that actually happened. And then read his collection, A Scattering. My favorite book of his is one called Katrina Brack, which is pretending that it is work in translation when it isn't. I thought that was really interesting. Christopher is lovely. I met him, I remember, at the Albra Poetry Festival in 2012. So more than 10 years ago now when my first poetry collection had just come out and he was just very supportive and lovely. And this is a collection that he wrote when he had COVID, I think last year. This is looking back on his childhood in Hong Kong. And then I also have this other poetry collection which was sent to me for review from my publisher, Blood Axe. This is Maura Dooley's 559. Blurbs of poetry collections are always quite obscure. The back says that these are quizzical poems concerned with time and mortality, which ask fundamental questions about our lives, such as where have you gone and who were you anyway? I read a couple of sample poems from this and enjoyed them, so I look forward to reading that. Next, we have some Bengali translated fiction that I have purchased from Tilted Axis Press. This is Sanjeeva Banjapadai's Abandon. It's translated from the Bengali by Arundhavasinha and this is about a woman called Ishwari who's decided to run away from home. She wants to leave all her responsibilities behind and try and write a novel but then it turns out that her five-year-old son Rue has followed her and is trying to catch up. So this is about her chasing her dreams but then also facing up to her responsibilities and also what society expects of her. This is a beautiful novel which subtly examines the rift that can open up inside us. Compassion and cruelty are so close that it times they become indistinguishable. Prepare to be wrenched apart. Okay, I will prepare myself. A picture book that arrived in the post which excites me greatly is You're So Amazing by James and Lucy Catchpole. It's illustrated by Karen George. You may remember me talking about James's first book which was called What Happened to You? question mark about a young boy called Joe. Here is Joe who happens to have one leg, is just playing in the playground, is sick and tired of people saying what happened to you? And this is the follow-on book where Joe is addressing people asking, well, not even asking, telling him, you're so amazing, you're so inspirational for just, you know, doing everyday things like existing. <laughs> um, these series of books are brilliant to generate discussion around disability, how we talk about it with our kids and also makes disabled kids and adults, quite frankly, feel less alone. So yes, recommend this. I'll talk about it more in my wrap up at the end of this month. The next book is one I may read alongside Kenny's because it is also a book talking about disability and Japan. This is Blind Spot: Exploring and Educating on Blindness by Maud Rao. This is one of the 404 Inklings books. Very little kind of long essays exploring a particular topic and the topic that Maud explores here is blindness, their experience of sight loss and also the history of sight loss with a particular focus on them traveling to Japan and what that was like. So that is really intriguing, definitely up my street. Next, I purchased several books, which I'm gonna whiz through because they're going to be coming up in a reading vlog very soon. These books are books that are on the Gillette Prize long list that I wanted to read but didn't yet own. There were a couple of books I'd already read and a couple that I owned but hadn't read yet, but these five were ones that I either hadn't heard of or hadn't got round to picking up yet. The Gillette Prize celebrates work by writers of color in the UK. So these five, which I'll just mention, and then we'll talk about in depth when I read them. In a couple of videos time, we have got Travis Alabanza's None of the Above, which is a non-fiction book about being non-binary. We've got Oke Chiguruzello's novel Here Again Now, which is a queer story set in Peckham. We have got Derek Uruzu's book Losing the Plot, which I think is tracking his mother's journey 
from Ghana to the UK, but then kind of creating a chorus of voices of other women who also made the same journey. This novel, which has the most beautiful cover, When We Were Birds by Anya Lloyd Banwu. And I think that this is about family who have this ability to talk to the dead. And then a non-fiction book by Angela Hui called Takeaway, which is about her life growing up in Wales and her parents ran this Chinese takeaway. So I'll be reading these five books along with books on the long list that I already owned in that reading vlog very soon. There were two books on the international book a long list that I loved so much that I wanted to read more work by those authors. So I've got two of those books here. I bought Permafrost by Eva Balthasar, which is translated from the Catalan by Julia Sanchez. This is the second book in a loose triptych trilogy. And I know you don't have to read them in order because I've read Boulder, which I think is the second and I didn't feel like I was missing anything. Each of these books looks at a particular queer woman and the issues that she's having, thinking of selfhood and also what the world expects of her. This narrator uh, becomes an au pair in Scotland and develops a hatred of the colour green. <laughs> I just find that so bizarre as something to have on the blurb of a book that I'm delighted. And then the other author I wanted to read more from was Victor Short, who is a Norwegian writer and their book Is Mother Dead was my favourite from this year's International Book Along List. This is one of their other books called Will and Testament. This is translated from the Norwegian by Charlotte Balsand, who translated the other book as well. I believe that a lot of her writing is quite autobiographical um, and it looks at feuds within families. The blurb is very, very short. It says it's a lyrical meditation on trauma and memory, as well as a furious account of a woman's struggle to survive and be believed. A crime novel that's coming out in July is this one. This is a proof copy. It's called Before We Were Innocent by Ella Berman. And I love the blurb on this. It says 10 years ago, after a sun-soaked summer spent in Greece, Bess and Joni were cleared of having any involvement in their best friend of Angeline's death, but that didn't stop the media from calling them every name under the sun. Now Joni is tangled up in a crime in LA eerily similar to that one fateful night. And when she turns up at her old friend's doorstep asking for an alibi, Bess has no choice. She still owes her. That sounds brilliant. The cover is going to look like this. As I said, it is out in July. I bought a poetry collection by Rachel Boast, who is a fellow disabled, chronically ill poet. This is called Hotel Raphael. And I saw who shared one of these poems on Twitter. Oh, I can't remember. Somebody did, I think it was Julia Bird. I think it was her. And I've been meaning to read Rachel's work for ages and this reminded me that I should pick it up. Again, poetry book blurbs are often vague, but this says it charts a journey through heat and pain and describes not only the reality of chronic illness, but living with it at a time of global crisis. Speaking of poetry, the next is the debut novel by a poet who I really like, and that's Fatima Asgar. And this is her debut book, When We Were Sisters. And I think this is coming out in the UK this summer or the autumn, but I much prefer the cover across the pond in the States. So I purchased a copy over there and had it shipped over. If you're looking for different editions of books, Blackwells often have the US edition as well as the UK one. So it's worth checking out their website. So this is a novel about sisters. I don't want to read the whole blurb because I sometimes feel that blurbs give away too much. So let me just read you the first line, which says, three orphans grapple with siblinghood and coming of age as Muslims in America in this lyrical debut novel. You may recognize her poetry collection, If They Come For Us, which I've spoken about on here before. I love it when poets branch out and do other things. And actually speaking of poets who branch out and do other things. This second last book here is On Trampolining by Rebecca Perry, who's a poet whose work I love. This is a memoir that's talking about her childhood and teenagers trampolining, and then using that as a jumping off point, no pun intended, to talk about other things relating to that as well. Her writing is always beautiful. I'm sure this will be no exception. And then finally, I have a non-fiction book by Nadia Korafor, and this is her book, Broken Places, Outer Spaces. I didn't realize that she was a fellow disabled writer. And this is a book about her having scoliosis and talking about that, especially her teenage years. I think this is adapted from a TED talk that she gave and I'm very much looking forward to reading it. I'm sure you're familiar with her work. She wrote Binti and other science fiction, fantasy type books. Yes, 
So those are all of the books that I'm adding to my shelves. As I said, I will list all of them in the description box down below if you want to um, go and check those out if you missed any titles as I was going through these books. If you're new to my channel and you would like to subscribe, that would be lovely. If you enjoy my content and would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that would be very kind. Link to that is in the description box down below. Support over on Patreon allows me to keep creating free content on here for everybody and also funds my time making it accessible by making captions and all of that good stuff. I hope you're all having a good Sunday and I will see you next week. Sending lots of love. Bye.